what time are we done here? 4.30? Okay. Size of the entire enterprise Joomla community, uh, as, as we know it as well. Uh, most people not thinking about Drup, uh, Joomla in the enterprise uh, and what you can and can't do with it. So just a little, about, a little bit about me. I'm Robert Jacoby. I'm president of uh, Arc Technology Group. Uh, we are a US-based, uh, Chicago-based Joomla development shop. We've been working with Joomla for its entire life. Uh, here's my email. Follow me on Twitter. Call my mobile. So if you really want to bother me, that's uh, the actual mobile number. Call anytime. <laughs> Whether I answer or not is a totally different matter. Ryan's already laughing about things he could do. Uh, Eric Technology Group, uh, we believe in open solutions driving business success. So Joomla is a key foundation of obviously being able to do that. We have uh, 14 plus years of custom application development. So on top of Java, PHP, and of course, integrating with Joomla. Content management from day one, starting with uh, custom Java-based CMS. And we do expert custom development of all sorts of shapes and sizes. And our client base is Fortune 50 to entrepreneurs. So a lot of, uh, obviously, the enterprise work is for Fortune 50 or that size, billion dollar companies uh, that need a solution. And Joomla, Joomla, Joomla. We're here at Game Beyond, of course, because of Joomla. Uh, we have supporters and uh, speakers at, uh, in the Joomla community for many, many years. We founded uh, Joomla Chicago. Uh, we spoken and sponsored Joomla World Conference, J and Beyond, uh, Joomla Days throughout the uh, US, and hopefully soon uh, across the world. So let's get to the core of what we're talking about here today. And you know, what is the enterprise? So it's more of a business discussion. I know Thomas had a more technical discussion a lot about a lot of the integration of what's going on. We'll talk about some of the architecture, but we really won't get into exact code or anything crazy like that. Um, it is not the very, very old HMS enterprise. It is not the shuttle enterprise, and of course, it is not the Star Trek enterprise. But they're all ships. They're all containers with lots and lots of parts that are very important that they're integrated correctly and together. So the core business functions that we see that occur in the enterprise are sales, uh, asset management. So is it document management? Is it uh, other types of assets, videos, uh, other media, user management? Uh, Thomas spoke about managing millions and millions of users. And then also complex business workflows. So if you can imagine your regular Joomla install, there's an article, some, there's a publisher, editor, save it, it's done. That's a very, very simplified workflow to what we're normally uh, seeing where there are multiple applications talking to each other and workflows that need to be managed, approved, uh, checked, reported upon, regulated uh, throughout the process. So multiple levels of permissions, not just the Joomla ACL, which is complicated enough, but even further permissions down the road. Uh, development of use cases throughout the process. So you're dealing with all sorts of types of users. They're going to have different workflows through the process uh, from the end user side. And the end user can be someone internal to the company, of course, as well as your regular end users. Connectivity to other systems. And this is one of the key things that we find that we have to deal with in an enterprise application. You're not building out the whole process yourself. You're integrating with other pieces from accounting uh, to CRM systems to sales systems to file systems throughout the process. So the key is the integration of all these things. So again, CRM, very common uh, to interface uh, with. You know, accounting, reporting functionality. So you may have very complex reporting systems that are pulling data from all sorts of areas. Uh, the production process, so it could be a digital production process, digital media production process. We need to be able to stamp and report and follow through and make sure things are happening. Uh, marketing systems, so integrating marketing data that may be produced from third-party vendors, from uh, internal to the company, but not necessarily in a Joomla platform. Of course, integrating with IT, which is always fun, uh, but only if you're running the entire IT shop. 
Who needs the Enterprise? The captain needs the Enterprise, so Captain Kirk. <laughs> Uh, it's all about integrating multiple complex systems for a common business goal. Again, we're, we're driving and sailing in one vessel, which is filled with pieces. You have a captain, you have the sails, the mast, the keel. And I take a breather. These are my question moments so I don't talk right through everything. Uh, <laughs> any questions are sort of on the generic size and scope of, of what it means to uh, have an enterprise or work with an enterprise? So everyone knows, everyone's got that down. I'll believe you. What is Joomla's role? So there's the CMS, of course. So that's sort of that just nice content layer that we're all very comfortable uh, working with. Uh, it's also a content aggregator. So we see it in a lot of uh, extensions already in the JED. So you know, you have a module that's pulling a Google map or something. So it's being able to pull content from other areas. So aggregating content from different pieces uh, in the network. And it's the front end. So the administrator can go in, end user can go in and just have a complete uh, site experience. Uh, the templates manage through there. And then we're also utilizing the Joomla framework for custom applications that sit to the side of sort of the core Joomla CMS install. So when we get a little deeper into uh, what this project is like, uh, we'll talk about how we have built out a whole silo that just runs along on the framework, but being able to have the framework on both ends from the custom application standpoint and also on the CMS makes, sure, makes it a lot easier for us to understand what's happening at both sides and communicate between both systems. You know, on the framework side, uh, the siloed application allows for the creation of data and assets uh, it has uh, APIs to be able to integrate data across multiple systems to obviously do the business process management of the data. One of our favorite things, that, which we have to deal with all the time, is the competitive landscape. So we have to fight against other platforms. Yes, Ryan. Yes. So do you mean data as in like content or any kind of, I mean, we've been talking about some stuff over the couple of days ago as well in terms of research that we need to be on the content. Like, is that in your plan? Like, what is the data? So data I in this context, context is more fixed than article content, if that's how you're referencing sure. yep. content. So this is, uh, uh, highly specialized along the lines of something like a zoo or a, a you know, right. but uh, not sort of with generic field sets, but very sp you know specific business logic data that's been created. So in that data, of course, you know numbers and numbers of fields, or static text fields, you know ints, floats, you know very specified typed uh, fields, uh, as well as uh, links to media assets, so word documents, spreadsheets. Uh, video files, uh, images, things like that. But again, it's, it's you know very specialized so that when you get to the place where you're you know integrating with the CMS, the CMS can call from a module or a component very specifically what it needs. It's faster, it's lighter. You're not having to drag all that stuff back and forth all the time. And then the processing on on the framework side is, you know, we're uploading millions and millions of images, so we need five sizes. So that's all happening on the framework side as well. So we're crunching through all the images. So there's your thumbnail, there's your mobile friendly, there's your tablet friendly, there's your print ready uh, media. Thomas, we've been talking about you. <laughs> uh, so talk about platforms. So you, of course you can build an entire enterprise solution from scratch using some kind of framework and just run with it. Uh, that's a lot of work. You, you'll be able to do it in you know, very specialized ways of what you want done, but you're going to lose out on support and ongoing maintenance and uh, you know, being able to quickly adapt to features and functionality that exist. Uh, one of our main competitors on the platform, or sort of on the platform CMS side, is Drupal. Uh, 
they claim they can do everything that Joomla does. And of course they can. You can always spend more time and money with Drupal. Uh, we feel that there's much more out of the box for Joomla that supports it. And, uh, and especially in uh, uh, how uh, it was talked about during the uh, lunch break about you know, MVC and object-oriented programming and things that are now very, very natural to Joomla, uh, which are still trying to be picked up by the other uh, platforms, which you know, helps for extendability, flexibility, and uh, scalability. And then proprietary systems. So there's probably trip over a whole bunch of them. Um, certainly Oracle has systems uh, that manage uh, enterprise solutions as well as others. Uh, you can build it internally or externally. So you have your IT team internal, which is great because you're, you're going to have all the business logic for how everything is supposed to go on in the company. The business expertise is there. You know, the technical expertise is there. But the problem is, how often do they do it, and how long will it take, and how much? What is the real cost of doing that internally versus externally? So, uh, being able to pull business logic and business rules from a client is actually much easier in the short and long run, rather than them trying to learn how to build an entire enterprise solution sort of from scratch with their own development team. Uh, so, us as a developers, you know, what's what's our role? Well, first we scream a lot and try to figure out what is going on. These projects can be very, very large. So there's a lot of hair pulling and trying to figure out how do we manage the whole process. So documentation, requirements, being able to walk through use cases, a lot of paperwork, a lot of thinking, architecture, all before you start really getting down into the nitty gritty. Um, many developers just want to go in there and start coding right away or do a few bit of requirements and be like, oh, this extension works, this extension works. I'll load it up and let it go. There's a lot of legwork that really, really needs to be done. So we need to make it work. And that process, requirements. Requirements, requirements, requirements. A large enterprise uh, application uh, can take four, eight, 12 weeks of being able to really understand requirements. So that's you know talking to the stakeholders uh, at the company, figuring out how they use what they have today what they need for it to do tomorrow, and pulling those details and uh, pulling them out down into uh, requirements that the client understands, so they can sign off and say yes, I expect this to do this, and then you know transforming it into technical requirements uh, for your development teams to be able to integrate. So that goes into use cases, obviously a very uh, you know strict but flexible project plan because. The larger the scale and scope of a project, the more likely you know, one little thing can trickle down and cause problems. So it's very project, uh, you need to be very tight with your project management and, and set expectations and goals on a continuous basis. So lots and lots of communication with all the documentation and project planning. Uh, significant architecture. What's nice about Joomla is it solves a lot of sort of that, those front end architectural issues. It's done, it's ready to go. It's really more about how do we architect the integration points, where do those occur, and if you're building a custom application, what that architecture will be. The actual development. So at some point, you actually have to put uh, fingers to keys and make it happen. And then again, the communication. We, we, we can't stress this enough. For our, our, our enterprise so clients, uh, there's usually a daily call. It, you know, if you think about your agile, you know, quick stand-ups, we actually have stand-ups with our clients that happen sort of after our uh, development team stand-ups, just so they're understanding what the process and flow of things is going on. Um, that's a quick five-minute call just to touch base, and then we generally do weekly, full-on hour uh, meetings to really go over everything that's going on. You know, are the expectations being met? Are there any questions? Are there any issues? So when we, when we look at an enterprise uh, project, you know, we're connecting the dots. You know, at the center really is Joomla. Joomla is where all this is going to really flow through at the end of the day. So uh, you know, in this case, we have a CRM attached to Joomla. We have a uh, credit card processing. We have a full asset database. You know, there's bidding. It's an auction system that we're we're, we're talking about here. And all this flows right through Joomla. <laughs> Questions. Everyone's got it. And so everyone's built one already. 
just you know, <laughs> Peter raised. Yes, Ryan. Uh, number of stakeholders, first and foremost. You're not dealing with necessarily just one perfect person who's going to be able to answer all your questions. So th there'll be multiple people who are you know, directly concerned and involved with, with the success of the project. Uh, there may be a project manager on their side that's sort of doing day-to-day -day work with your project manager. But given the fact that there are many significant stakeholders in uh, these types of projects, uh, responses may take a little longer. So you need to figure that out into your project planning and expectations. If, for example, you know in the development process uh, certain content is required to understand what the data sets will look like, uh, that may take two or three weeks as the client side project manager tries to pull that data from the stakeholders uh, in the uh, enterprise. So that, that's one thing that is critical to, to understand is that the, the, the workflow sometimes can be disrupted by the stakeholders having other things on their plates besides your project. Um, and there are going to be multiple stakeholders. So there'll certainly be the person that's signing the check. There'll be the project manager who wants to make sure on their end everything's good. Uh, there'll be the marketing department who will always be in, in on a type of project like this. You know, when you're talking about projects that are, you know, six figures, you know, plus in uh, U.S. dollars, that, you know, that's going to certainly raise everyone's uh, level of expectation. And then you'll have you know, C-level management who will probably be involved as well. And IT, of course, so there's, everyone's got a, a huge voice and it's being able to sort of manage that process uh, really from before the sale uh, to past the sale. Do you do this on behalf of the product? Me personally? No. So we have... Well, so the, we, developers are in on it. You know, our lead developer is always in on every meeting. We have a, a account slash project manager that facilitates that process. So that person can do sort of the business communication side, and then the developer is always there to back that up. But we put our, our lead on that. Yes? The bigger the company is, they're going to want to see a Gantt charts, sort of, you know, all, you know, kind of waterfall-esque type of presentation. That's what they understand, and they're using it internally. They're going to try to match it up exactly with what they have. So, you know, at our end, we're going to provide them material that kind of reflects what they're used to seeing. Internally, we'll be sort of being much more agile about when pieces fall into the place, as long as we stay, you know, fit in within those major milestones. That okay. So things may move around internally based on, you know, how the code's being teased out. So, and that's what the constant communication is there for. So if there's an expectation that the, by the end of Friday there might be X function feature in there, but really after traveling down a bit, it seems that feature A should go first, and we can put feature X afterwards, but it's going to still hit in the same mi milestone. We just have that com constant communication and the client's, you know, very understanding at that point because they realize that the goal is to hit the major milestones, not to necessarily hit every day. And that's what we do. So internally, it's more agile, but the presentation of the uh, enterprise is a little different. <laughs> it, it really is, because it, it is progress, and it's, it's, but it's, it, but, but the, you know, the trick is, you know, they want to see these big, happy charts that say, you're right here. Correct, but that's why the but that's why you still have to hit those milestones. So you know, if you're going to hit in eight weeks out, this level of functionality is complete. That's you're still that's your you know sp sprint, for lack of a better word. Have you ever thought you really need to go agile and you tell them that and that they have you successfully told them that? No, because they don't get it. So they never really. Not yet, not yet. I mean, that's no. 
at, at some level, that's, that's that back and forth. You know, where's the client really comfortable with? They're, they're comfortable with understanding the state of the project at certain points in the, in the life cycle of it. Well, don't, don't forget, as, as consultants, developers, and all that, our job is to make their lives easier. Right. So it's hard to, you know, necessarily say, well, by the way, you've got to do, not only do you have to do all the work for content creation and documentation on your end that supports our documentation, but by the way, we need to have you kind of switch over to a different project mi management mindset. Uh, that's, that has not worked out. We haven't really pushed on that. They are. They are. Uh, we have some more legacy clients that are much more fixated on that. But yes, they are. Because uh, it, it, it works. And, and it, it's, it's much more flexible. But, you know, it, maybe it's just the clients. <laughs> you know, that, it just changes. Um, the good thing is, obviously, I think all, almost all of us here are much more comfortable working with Agile as that gets pushed forward up uh, the corporate food chain. That, that all of our lives would be easier. Internal to the company, it's it's straight agile. Yeah. Does that answer the question? Yeah, okay. Correct, correct, and then so that what the, the client doesn't get something every day, they get communication every day, but they get sort of that up major update maybe once a week, twice a week, depending you know how long we set up that sprint for. Well, again, that's why you have milestones that are not so far apart that you can actually, and it's just visually very easy for uh, a lot of managers, you know, to, to just see that and go, okay, we're four weeks out, we're eight weeks out, we've got, you know, one, two, three major milestones kicked out, we're, we're still on track for where we want to launch. Uh, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about Hilco Industrial. They are a uh, U.S.-based firm uh, based outside of Chicago. They are resellers of distressed companies. So your company is going bankrupt. Uh, you know, probably one of the bigger European firms that they've done this with was uh, HMV. I think everyone knows them. They're uh, the record people, whatnot, <laughs> or music store, something to that effect. So they'll purchase uh, a lot of their assets, you know, out of bankruptcy or, or close to bankruptcy, and then uh, we sell them through auctions. Uh, so this is their homepage. We'll even just dive into it for a little bit. So this uh, Joomla front end, everything that comes into the site is either via component or a module, or you know, plug-in, but mostly uh, components and modules. You know, things that we're using natively you know, straight out of the Joomla box is multi-language support. You know, we had to do zero work for that, just kick and go and add the actual custom language files that we needed for uh, our custom work. Uh, simple uh, slideshows. Here is where we get to some of the real nitty gritty, uh, all these uh, current sale points up through here, th all that data is being pulled straight out of the uh, asset database system. That's a custom application built on the framework. So that's being called up through, uh, you know, the REST API that's uh, been built, and it's uh, just a set of modules that are Joomla-based and can be managed and moved around um, in your regular Joomla template. Uh, all the items on the right, again, those are custom or uh, so completely custom-built modules or in some cases, just the generic Joomla custom module where uh, their end users can go in and just update, you know, maybe 
sort of exact, you know, this is a perfect example of the machinery marketplace. That's just a graphic and an image they want to be able to do. So we just have simple floating modules. Uh, these are ongoing auctions and the current ones. So the one highlighted in green, I don't know if you can see the actual green color. Uh, that's an auction going right now. Uh, these auctions uh, are huge spikes for them, so there's a lot of uh, interesting traffic management uh, that goes on. Uh, this is an actual component uh, with its own custom views, assets, details. You can actually go and bid on this, uh, on any of these assets or products. Uh, they are continually upgrading and tweaking uh, the process. So this, this site launched in January. Uh, we have ongoing maintenance and custom development going forward with them. So, you know, as they do auctions, see how some of their users work through. They they really didn't have a online auction presence before. They do uh, did a lot of auctions directly on site. So you would just drive everyone over there and do something. Uh, and they've all moved a lot of this to the online auction uh, platform that uh, we have set up here. So each one of these auctions uh, may have up to 100,000 items. Uh, in those items, each item may have 10, 20 images, other assets attached to it. So they're doing one or two of these a week. So there's millions and millions and millions of pieces of data. So all that data is coming from the custom uh, Joomla framework application. Uh, as a user, uh, you would log in. And unlike uh, the big data conversation just in the last session, uh, we actually store all the user data in Joomla. Uh, that user data is, we've extended it with some uh, extra tables for certain uh, features and functionality, but it is actually the uh, root uh, holder of all user data. It syncs up with the uh, CRM services. It syncs up with the uh, auction, third-party auction system services, uh, but it's all transparent. So you create a user through Joomla. It's a regular Joomla user. After that's created, you know, services fire in the back end after that to make sure it's integrated with the CRM, the auction system, it's transparent to the end user. Session data is crazily managed, but again, it's all, the root is still out of the Joomla site. So again, you can do all this with Joomla, it's all there. I mean, you may extend it depending on the types of fields and things you need, all that data is there. So a lot of that heavy lifting is already done for you. I mean, that's the key about all this system. Uh, we have, you know, pretty straightforward, uh, Joomla article page is still hiding here, so that's, that's still there. Just inside of template, nothing fancy, but you know they have editors and publishers that can go in and change some of their more static content uh, versus their very dynamic uh, product content. Uh, again, just very happy Joomla. Um, you know, we have uh, custom search, so you can either search all the lots for information, or you can just do a regular site search. Um, so I don't, know what we, I don't know what was running in the last auction. But let's try uh, something like steel. It's a lot of lazy loaders for some of this data, but here we go. And it's just, and this is just a Joomla search plugin that fires and then runs the component after it uh, pulls the results. So again, very, you know, if you can do these Joomla kinds of extensions, you can build the whole system out. Uh, it's, it's. Time, it's commitment, but it's not, if you've already been sitting in the Joomla development world, this is nothing new uh, for anyone at all. I mean, that's a pretty straightforward and simplified walkthrough of, of the actual site. Um, some of the more interesting things, you know, about this are, you know, what's, what's the full-on architecture of what we're doing here? Obviously, PHP. You know, Joomla needs PHP. It runs PHP. PHP we got. MySQL, okay, so we have MySQL. That's pretty straightforward, nothing crazy yet. Wait a minute, IIS, what's going on here? So we're not using a, a, Apache anywhere in, in this entire stack. Windows Azure SQL. So now, now we're figuring out what's going on here. So wait, Windows Azure, Microsoft's cloud uh, solution. Windows Azure CDN, okay, we have millions and millions of digital assets that need to be managed. So we need their blob storage and a, a content delivery network to support that. This is an international company. You saw that it's running out of Thailand, out of China, uh, you know, uh, Germany, UK. And of course, tons and tons of JSON, AJAX, API REST calls. Uh, 
It sits on Azure because they're uh, Microsoft house internally. They already had uh, some of their systems uh, sitting on Azure, in fact. So we were able to uh, install and run Joomla on the Azure Cloud Platform. We needed that regardless for uh, flexibility because they're an auction house. So you know, five, six days a week, nothing's really going on. And then when those auctions hit, the spikes are about a thousand fold of regular usage. So you know, you could have on a regular basis, you know, 10,000 page views. Auction time, you know, you're dealing with 100,000, 200,000 page views. So we need that flexibility of a cloud solution. We need to be able to easily uh, replicate sites in case of uh, any issues. So you know, we, we can have multiple uh, locations, Europe location, US location, uh, scalable database that we didn't need to worry about all the time, uh, obviously scalable uh, storage. Uh, Joomla framework, easy to integrate with uh, any database system. Joomla CMS out of the box is uh, still being tweaked to make sure it works with SQL Server, so that's why MySQL still exists. In fact, if uh, you know, Joomla 3 was 100% uh, perfect with MS SQL, uh, we would have just gotten rid of the MySQL uh, portion entirely. Uh, for Joomla 3.3, we are pushing out all the MS SQL uh, fixes. So starting Joomla 3.3, you'll actually be able to use the MS SQL portion of, uh, for Joomla database install seamlessly like you would MySQL, which uh, sort of used to work in 2.5 and, and then during the 3.0 growth process uh, kind of died for a little bit, and now uh, we've decided to rebuild that. So that's sort of the generic architecture. I don't have a little question slide for this, but any questions about that architecture portion? Because I know that it usually becomes an interesting question, like why are you on Windows? Why are you on, you know, not using Rackspace or Amazon? Anything like that? Did yes. No, uh, so uh, window, well. Windows Azure supports uh, multiple levels of PHP, so you, you can use whichever one uh, makes mo most sense at the time. Uh, connecting to databases is very easy, setting up. We actually have a video on our website how to just create a quick Joomla, uh, quickie, uh, Joomla website on Azure. It takes like three minutes. Um, <laughs> so uh, if you ever just want to walk through that, it's, it's really like nine, eight steps, most of which are put in your U <laughs> standard Joomla creation information. Uh, so getting that up and running on a, on a Microsoft web instance is, is quite trivial. Um, you get your regular SFTP access, so if you need to push files, uh, what we like about the platform, which most providers have to some degree, is uh, integration with uh, Git. So we have our multiple deployments. We have our development stage and production deployments. You know, we can push different branches to each deployment you know, when things are ready. So from a, just a pure development process, it makes our lives very easy, too, to make sure we know what code is where, when it was pushed, you know, what was going on. Can, we can roll back you know, very easily, things like that. Is there a reason not to go? I mean, if you have another project coming up, you need to go either way. You go either way, left, left, server, and the rest is spread up towards that. Is there a reason not to go to Linux? Uh, we, we don't have, it's more about do you really need a big cloud-based solution, or do you really need just, you know, it's the scale of the type of application. So, you know, uh, cloud's easier and easier to understand. Uh, you know, security's you know, managed. A lot of the, the support is also offline. So a lot of that IT infrastructure support, you, you know, get your cloud service provider support package. All of them have it. You know, we're not here just to sell Microsoft, but, you know, really the, you know, the, the cloud solutions have support packages. You know, we want to be responsible for the code. We don't want to be responsible for... IT infrastructure for worrying about bandwidth, for worrying about you know scaling. What's nice about you know all the cloud solutions is the auto scaling features and functionality that you can just kind of tweak up and down. You know, set up parameters for when it's supposed to uh, scale. So that is what you know the type of uh, expectations uh, a lot of enterprise clients have. You know, obviously not going down, but also to scale appropriately to their needs. And they've just fixed that. 
They just announced, I think last week, that you'll be able to have sort of your static IP that never disappears ever again. For, Correct. Exactly. They, they actually I just announced that either it was rolled out last week or it's going to be rolled out this week or next that you can be able to maintain that IP address. It's very good, but yeah. What's nice about, again, we probably have more experience with using Azure than Amazon. Uh, we do have some things on Amazon's uh, platform as well, but uh, uh, Azure seems to roll out uh, on a very consistent basis, you know, new features and functionality. So, uh, you know, they've rolled out backup functionality. They just rolled out uh, a new way to easily support multiple, you know, stage environments. So you can have your dev stage in production um, all sort of within one. When we started working on this, we had three complete separate web instances. Now you can roll them up into web, one web instance and easily flow through your uh, deployment process. And therefore, it makes it get across understandable when, when the same um, per hour or whatever um, per, per application per instance would scale up and down. Yeah, so you, you get a general idea. It's still kind of the cloud costing voodoo. Um, we do know that some of the Previous, since, since we've wrapped it all up uh, in Azure the way the uh, Hilco had it previously, uh, we have reduced cost by about 50%. Uh, correct, because the, you know, their, platform, their platform before and some of their spread out infrastructure on rack space, you know, they, were, they were like, well, we'll just take the highest level of everything just to support any kind of uh, you know, spikes and things like that, and now it's much more uh, you know, it's smarter in that regard because their fluctuations were so high. I mean, you get 100x, 1,000x. But, but that should be a good thing, right? You know, yeah, that if you had that much extra traffic, that there should be something on the back end that reflects the, the, the profitability of all that extra traffic. Yeah, that. Well, it, they have a, you know a max. You know, if if it doesn't go past you know ten thousand dollars a month, then no flags are raised. They're fine. If if it's you know less than that, then all the better because that's you know keeping more of their uh, uh, cash in line with the, the budget. So certainly there's going to be expectations of what it should be. You know, we talked with Microsoft. You know, how should we expect the billing to be? So they gave us an idea, but you really don't know until you start you know hitting it with those first few auctions. And after the launch, it's all unicorns and rainbows. That's the best. You don't have to worry about a thing. It's all done. Or not. So technical support. Uh, to, to really have an enterprise relationship, it's never just a single project or rollout. That's not, you never go into that expectation. Uh, you're going to support the client. They're going to expect that from you. That, you know, if they don't ask it, then they're not serious. Uh, since you will be building this, you will have to support it. You'll know best how to support it since you built it. Uh, you know, things you know, things to worry about. You know, what kind of call-in support are you going to have? You know, are you even going to have call-in support? Uh, we recommend yes. You have some kind of level of doing that. Uh, you know, we we do standard nine to five support in office, so we don't have any call center. Um, you know, ticketing systems. You know, if it's not a freak out call in emergency, how are you going to uh, handle this? Uh, actually, Ryan and I were just discussing this. You know, uh, we like to use Jira, uh, Atlassian's Jira for the uh, actual development process, but that's a little uh, unwieldy, complex, and inflexible for clients to really get comfortable with. And there's just way too much information, you know, as developers and project managers internally, you don't necessarily want the client to see every nitty gritty bit of code speak or project management speak that just may not be relevant. Uh, so we use Zendesk on the front end and integrate that ticketing so it gets pushed back to Jira. We can do all the, you know, cooking in the back and then push updates through Zendesk and the client's magically happy. So that's a nice system for them, so they don't have to worry about calling in. Mm -hmm. Zendesk and Jira. So the client gets Zendesk, 
gets pushed to Jira, and uh, everyone's happy. Tempo. We use Tempo on the Jira side. So we, we, we use the entire Atlassian stack for Yes. Yes. Same thing, tempo. So, we, so you know, there, a, there's a project in Jira for support, okay. and that's what Zendesk pushes into, and then that's what you know we collect uh, time from and tempo from. It will come in from Jira. Ah, so the client submits a ticket somehow. Client submits it in Zendesk. Okay. There's a, you know, a connector between Zendesk and Jira. That gets sent into Jira. Uh, the support personnel are working off of it in Jira, ah, okay. and then submitting it back. And then when that's, you know, gets flagged the correct way, the Zendesk plugin will recognize it and then push the info back to Zendesk. So Zendesk is really for the customer of Jira. Correct. Yes, because there's just so much more data we can pull. It, it's just, it, it's not the easiest thing in the world to use, but there's so much more data uh, and so much more integration you know, with uh, everything from the uh, development rollout cycle using ba uh, Bamboo for deployments, you know, the Confluence pages, uh, Jira ticketing, Tempo time management, uh, and we've really found that that's, having that all sort of in that one suite actually makes life a lot easier. Because we used to, before, you know, we'd sit there on Basecamp and Harvest, and that, yeah, and uh, it, it was too many pieces and worrying about too many connectors and hoping that some data that you really wanted was there. You know, at least in the Atlassian suite, it's all kind of available and accessible. Correct. But you were talking here, you, get, you want to spend it You have to have it. You have to report back to the client at some point what's going on. And you know, when you have a thousand tasks uh, for a project, you know, you need to be able to have clarity as to what's happening. Why? Why is it happening? You know, X task is taking you know twice as long. How's that going to reflect down uh, through all, you know all of its parent classes? You know, all through all of its stories and and so forth. And then documentation. Documentation no one likes to do. You have to do it. Get over it. A client's going to expect it. They'll expect it in a nice juicy PDF that they can reference. They may never read it because they'll call you and submit tickets instead. But uh, having that available is just part of you know, the service offering for uh, enterprise work. It's, it's expected, and you should just build it into your mindset. Uh, maintenance. You know, so technical support is handling the queries. Maintenance is the ongoing stuff. It's going to happen, and they're going to expect it as well. So everything from you know dealing with security updates, upgrades, features, you know optimizations. You know we're continually looking at how to speed up processes. You know on enterprise applications. If we look at the Hilco Industrial site, uh, we've recently rebuilt the entire search uh, backend. So behind the actual Joomla scenes, uh, we've moved to a full t uh, text search uh, SQL Server, or standalone SQL Server outside of the Azure SQL for uh, large portions of that now because the content. Got grew faster than we all expected, and we need to tweak uh, search for that and be able to build indexes uh, in a more uh, optimized and uh, quicker way. Uh, standard updates, you know, there's going to be, can you change this? Can you change that? We like the little extra functionality. Uh, benefits of doing enterprise in Joomla? Drinking beer, you, again, you, life's been made easy for you using a Joomla, so enjoy a beer. But also, you know, the real things for the clients are, of course, scalability, flexibility, uh, and, and being able to drive 
uh, a return on investment due to the ability to integrate all these solutions. So all that information becomes much more useful when it's not standing alone in faraway places that only one person has access to. You know, you can start small. When we talk about, you know, why we went with uh, Windows Azure, they already had some functionality on Azure. We were able to test out early runs of software and see how it was growing and how it scaled with, uh, you know, uh, load, ba uh, load testing, load balancing, things like that. Um, it's easy to do, start small. Obviously, uh, that helps control costs. To some degree, it's always, you know, there's still that kind of cloud costing voodoo, but again, when you're just rolling stuff out, it's, it's very inexpensive on, on you know, some of these best platforms in the world uh, to get uh, development going. You know, for Hilco, obviously, it's to drive sales. So they need all the scalability and flexibility possible, integration possible to be able to make these auctions happen. It's a very direct thing. You know, the site's up there. Get to the content as quickly uh, as possible. Uh, have someone bid and sell. Yay, any more questions? Final set of questions. I think so we're on Well, yeah, it's of course, of course, in the business requirement, yeah, in the whole business requirements world, that, you know, everyone's got specific things that they want to accomplish. Oh, correct. Yes, correct. So, so part of that requirements process at the beginning is figuring out their business goals from start to finish. So, you know, one of the early requirements, which, you know, all of these, the requirement was we need people to buy things through the auction. Uh, but one of the early requirements was, uh, let's get as, make sure as many people as possible just create an account. Well, that changed after as many people, as, as they rethought the business process before any code was laid down. Well, we don't need a, you know, a million people logged in because there's really only 10,000 buyers in the world of this stuff because there's only so many people that can spend a million dollars on a you know, piece of equipment at any one time. So you know, try to flesh that out before you actually hit code again. Yes? Oh, time's over. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, I'm here all week. <laughs>